Are there any sort of keys that you look for in a niche or industry where you think, yes, there, there can be a community, we can build an email list, people will want to subscribe? Is, are there any like key aspects that you look for? I think that you can do this in any, any niche. Uh, I, I really do. But I think you, that you need to want to. So you're not going to build an audience and a community yourself as a site operator, as, as, a web, as a content site builder, if you don't care about the niche that you're in. It, it just, it won't happen. So if you want to do this and you want to be, you know, more anti-fragile or trying to achieve the concept of, of anti-fragile, which is uh, reading um, Nassim's books uh, since the pandemic, then you should look to to try and create an audience that, that can kind of carry you through, through, through bad times. And so like a Google update or like an Amazon update. So I, I think you can do this in any niche, but you need to care about it. You need to be, you know, into the, the 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 subject matter, you need to be passionate about it, and so it's not for everyone. I mean, niche sites, affiliate sites, it's not going to go away, and you can just do the keyword research, you can outsource the content, you can outsource the link building, and rank a site and, and flip a site, and and that's perfectly viable. But if you know, but you are at the the, the two gods of, of Google and or you know, if it's Amazon site, Google and Amazon by doing that. So if you don't, if you want to be able to sleep easier at night and hold these assets longer term then building an email list, building an audience, getting return visitors is, is the way to go. And the platform that I've chosen for this news, newsletter is called Substack, and it's predominantly for writers and podcasters. But I can see the, uh, I can see the ability to make a full-time living creating publications like this and actually not needing any of the technical stuff that comes with, with WordPress. Everything I'm doing now is on Substack. It's, it's really refreshing. I, I think that anyone can create a full-time living in any niche doing this now. If you choose to to do so, you, you just need to build up like a free uh, subscriber list, a free email list first. You need to get to, you know, one to 2,000 email subscribers, I think is a good place. And then once people, you know, learn about you, value your content, like what you're doing, want to support you, you can create free, uh, you can create premium content, paid content, and a percentage of those people are going to go with you. And so with Substack, they say aim for 10%. Other platforms, it's like 3 to 5%. At the moment, 3% of my free subscribers are now converting into paid subscribers. But that's I've only, I, I launched on Substack a, a few weeks ago, so that's now catching up. That's kind of rising quite quite quickly. That will level out. But yeah, so with with what I'm doing, I now have I have companies sponsoring the newsletter, so I have ads. Um, I'm able to drop in affiliate links and I have a paid subscriber list as well. So there's three different types of monetization and I own those subscribers in, in terms of the, the Stripe account and it's not a Google play. Like I don't care about search traffic at all. It's, it's a brand play. It's an audience play and it's very refreshing. And I think there's a lot that could be learned by, by attempting this, even if, even if it's like, you don't consider it could be something completely different to what you're doing, building content sites, just find something that you're most passionate about and see if you can build an audience because by getting that skill and understand and learning how other people are monetizing their lists with, by creating paid subscribers, I think is a very valuable skill set that you can then apply to whatever website that you are, uh, that you want to build out and hold longer term. So, yeah, it's it's a whole new world. I've learned a lot, and it feels a very natural fit, and and I feel, you know, stronger than than ever. I, that no one can take away my audience, whereas Google and Amazon can take away your livelihood if you are dependent on them. So, overnight. Yeah, I'd recommend bananas. people look into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and no, it's funny because like. Like we said, we, we've known each other for a few years here. And I was like, what, what is he doing? Like uh, content is free out there. You know, every, everyone's giving it away for free, but it definitely makes yeah. it a, you know, not valueless, but it's a commodity where people don't really pay attention to it. And I didn't, yeah, I didn't see the opportunity until just a couple of months ago. And now I see such a huge opportunity. It's, it's ridiculous for, for so many people. And so with the with the podcast, what I'm doing now is the first 30 minutes is free for the free RSS feed that everyone gets. And then after that, it's for paying subscribers. I saw the Acquired podcast, Acquired.fm, which is to do with venture capital. Uh, they were doing that. Uh, I've seen a couple of others doing that. 
and thought, okay, this, this seems a pretty good way of doing it. You don't have to create additional content. You can just cut up the content that you're already creating and put part of it behind a paywall. And people are subscribing from it. Like I sent a podcast episode on Friday, directly from that one post, five people signed up as paid subscribers. I assume because they wanted to hear the, the second part of the episode. So yeah, you need to really, yeah, content has been seen as as free, but I think you can reconceptualize your content as the product going forward and not having to put out free content all the time in, in order to sell a course or in order to sell, you know, training or consultancy or services. The actual content can be the product that people value and will pay for. And yeah, just having done so much research and seen so many examples of people making five figures a month just through a newsletter, through a podcast, through building a community. There's so many examples. I have like a massive trailer list and it's incredibly inspiring and yeah, a real alternative to, to the grind, the, what can be a grind with, you know, churning out new sites. Yeah. Yeah. Or, and, and I'm just thinking like a, like a no, normal, uh, narcissistic person. I'm thinking, Oh, how does this apply to me? Of course. But I'm thinking of, all the content that I put out, which I, I mean, I enjoy a lot, but I I'll say something, um, which I think it'll be okay. So we're 44 minutes in YouTube mm -hmm. is really weird. Cause there's so many distractions. There's a lot of morons on YouTube that watch like the first two minutes of my video, which if you're watching right. this now, you're not a moron. You're awesome. Thanks for watching. And then the podcast listeners, as you know, they're great podcast listeners are so engaged. I mean, I'm one myself and I love podcast yeah. in general. So it, it totally makes sense. And especially with the fact that there's so much content, if someone actually, you know, pay, how much is a subscription? Yeah. So I, I've priced it at $49 a month because the, the offering that I was leading with was this deals newsletter. So every week I do research across the whole market and I create the best content site deals. That's pretty time intensive and pretty valuable. I get access to deals that other people would have to, you know, pay for membership access or pay for a deposit to get. So, you know, uh, I think a, a valuable thing. But if I were to do it again, I, I would have priced it slightly less and have uh, a much higher percentage of paying subscribers to free subscribers. But people who are just doing like podcasts, they, they typically charge 10 bucks a month. But if you have a look at substack.com slash discover, you'll see the top 25 publications. You'll see how many subscribers they have and what they charge in all different types of, of, um, of categories. And it really is possible to, to get people paying for your, for, for content that you're probably already putting out. And the beauty with tying everything in together into a platform like Substack, and I think Substack is pretty unique, is that your free newsletter promotes your pod, everything kind of drives everything else. So the, you, you get free subscribers because you're putting out a good weekly newsletter because of that, they then get they then receive your podcast episodes because every uh, post that you publish on Substack it gets pushed out to the web, and it gets pushed out to email. So people can share your newsletter on the web, which is amazing because normally when you send a newsletter it gets lost. And people also then receive your your audio content, which is just a post where you upload an MP3. It looks exactly the same, and. Everything just helps everything else. Everything grows everything else. Your email, your newsletter drives your podcast episodes. It's a great platform to be on. And there are, there are plenty of other alternatives as well. But I see a lot of people doing a lot of jointed efforts with, you know, blog content, newsletter, YouTube channel, podcast, different feeds. There's a lot of upside by bringing it all together. And people would be surprised how many people would be happy to, to support that. And once you kind of focus on one area and bring it all together, it's a lot more easily consumed and visible and, and obvious to people. And you can demonstrate your value a lot better. So like I'm not putting out any more content on my personal site now, like my personal site, my WordPress site, that's kind of, that's kind of done. So it, it's interesting. It, it's really cause I've been, you know, SEO guy for, up to now, but nothing I'm doing right now going forward is, is an SEO play with, with this publication. But you can get these to, to very sizable, you know, revenue numbers and subscriber numbers. I mean, you know, the, the top newsletters that I follow, Morning Brew has 2 million subscribers. Last I heard, 20 million revenue. 
And that's just from from advertising. They don't have a paid, I don't think so, a paid part to that. Amazing. The Hustle newsletter has a paid part um, called Trends. But these can be really big businesses. And then they're doing nothing more than what you're already currently doing, what I was doing that, that I've now repackaged. It's kind of bl- blown my mind that there's this opportunity that was not visible to me. And, and a lot of other people are not seeing this. But this, yeah, it, I, this is, yeah. <laughs> well, it's blown. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, it's so different from you know what we see where it's just like pump out content free content free content but unfortunately everyone's doing that well i guess one thing i want to ask is the it sounds like it's fully integrated so the email list is all on the same platform with the podcast platform and you can Mm -hmm. build your email list which you own like the name so if you if you thought hey i'm going to go to some email service provider and i want to go back to the old model you could is that accurate yeah, one one click export. Like literally, you click a button, it immediately dumps the CSV into your downloads folder. Uh, folder. So I mean, there's no waiting, there's no asking. You own the subscriptions in Stripe. You can cancel. Everything would carry on. Um, I'm assuming <laughs> they're a platform. They they support creators. You know, they they want to support people. So I'm sure there's a way that you could e- very easily take everything with you. Yeah, everything everything's there. So yeah, it, it hosts your your podcast. So I, I no longer pay for a email provider, or I have no order responders. It's it's very freeing. Feels very free. The only software that I'm paying for now is, is Substack. I don't know need SoundCloud or some podcast hosting or um, anything else. It's all integrated, and you you just unlock so much more value by having such a more concentrated you know place to to be, and place to be discovered as well, and place to be shared. So everyone that shares a newsletter can find your podcast, can you know end up being a paying subscriber. Very so. Cool. Yeah, it's super cool. Like I had a conversation with Amelia Gardner recently, uh, like a couple of days ago about this and rambled on for a long time and kind of blew her mind, I think. And I think she's going to be considering doing something similar. I think a lot of people are going to be looking at this because you can just make a, you can build a much bigger audience way quicker and make a lot more money. However, we're talking about, you know, buying and selling websites. So <laughs> let's not get too, too distracted. But there's a lot that you can learn from this, yeah, right. from these new platforms, from and, and from con- and also just like considering what you're doing as being a publisher. I think there's a lot that you can learn from that. And so you know, Zoic uh, Ad Network, um, ad, AI-driven platform, can, you know, considers their customers as publishers. And I don't think as site builders, we typically consider ourselves that way. And so I, I think you you can kind of start to think a little bit differently and a little bit more professionally and consider what you're doing more as a, as a publisher can lead you into more profitable areas and find other ways of of monetizing and treating it as as a business definitely so yeah yeah 